Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 49 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about the validation summary control. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 46, 47 and 48 of this video series. Validation summary control is used to display a summary of all validation errors occurred in a web page at one place. In general, in a real-time application, it's very common to display a red asterisk next to the input control that has failed the validation, and the detailed error message associated with that input control is then displayed at the bottom of the page, as you can see here. This can be achieved very easily using the validation summary control. Let's see how to do this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I have the web form already designed here. I have four text boxes here with their respective labels, a button control and a label control. At the moment, we don't have any validation controls whatsoever. The idea is that we want four required field uh, validator controls because all the fields are required here. And then in addition to them, email is going to have a regular expression validator to make sure we have the right format for the email. And confirm password is going to have the compare validator to make sure the password and confirm password matches. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's get the required field validators first. So starting with email, we'll have the required field validator for every uh, input control that we have. So let me drag and drop the required field validator. Run it is equal to server. Let's give a meaningful error message. Uh, we will say email is required. Okay, and another required property is control to validate. In our case, this is going to be text email. And I want the message to be displayed in red color. So I'm going to set that to red. Okay, so let's copy and paste this for the other input controls that we have. So username is again a required field. So let's copy and paste it here. Uh, error message, we are going to say username is required. Control to validate is text username. So we're going to specify that here for color red. And let's copy this and use the same thing for the password field. Okay, so error message. Password is required. The control to validate is going to be text password for color red. And finally, Let's get this for the confirm password field. Here, confirm password is required and control to validate is text confirm password. Okay, so we have all the required field validator controls. Now, let's go ahead and get regular expression validator for the email. So let me drag and drop the regular expression validator. So again, for regular expression validator, the error message is going to be invalid email. And we want control to validate, which is going to be txt email. And the most important thing here is the validation expression. Before that, let's also set the four color to red. OK. So let's flip to the design mode and then set the validation expression. So we want to match that to internet email address. So that's the validation expression. And since we have two validation controls here next to each other, if we want the error messages to be properly displayed, then for both the validation controls, I'm going to set the display property to dynamic. Look at that. I'm selected both, I have selected both the validation controls. I'm going to change that together. So I set the uh, display to dynamic. OK. And then finally, for confirm password, I also want um, you know, the compare validator. So let's go ahead and drag and drop a compare validator to make sure, oh, not custom validator, it's going to be compare validator. It's going to ensure that both the password and compare password are going to match with each other. Okay, so error message, password, and confirm password should be same. OK, and we also need to specify control to validate, 
which in our case is going to be txt confirm password and control to compare with which control we want to compare we want to compare that with txt password okay so let's that set that to control to compare and let's also specify the type so the type here is going to be a string and operator of course how do you want to do the comparison they have to be equal okay and let's set the four color to red all right so let's flip to the design mode and again since we have two validation controls here for the error messages to be displayed properly set the display property to dynamic okay so with that in place let's go ahead and run this and see if all the validation uh, controls are working as expected so when the page loads if I don't enter anything and try to click save look at that I get all the error messages as expected and if I enter an invalid email address invalid email and if I enter the password which doesn't match and then look at that password and confirm password should be the same but our requirement is that we want to display a red asterisk next to the uh, input controls and then the detailed error messages using the validation summary control so let's see how to do that all we have to do is first let's get rid of this detailed error messages here I want instead of the detailed error messages I want a red asterisk how do I do that select all the validation controls and then go to the properties of that and I'm going to set the text property to all these controls asterisk okay so now the first problem is solved instead of the detailed error message we are getting the red asterisk symbols and the next thing is we want the detailed error messages and all you have to do for that is to drag and drop a validation uh, a validation summary control so before that let's get another table row right click on one of the table rows insert uh, row below and then here I'm going to drag and drop a validation summary control okay so we have the validation summary control let's flip to the source mode so we have the validation summary control and I want the color of the validation messages to be red in color so I'm gonna set that to red okay so these are the two properties that I mean that's the only property that I have set at the moment I dragged and dropped the validation summary control and set the four color to red so that the messages appear in red color now let's go ahead and run this and see if we are anywhere close to what we want to achieve okay I click Save look at that okay I get the red asterisk as expected and the error messages as expected email is required username is required password is required etc now on the other hand if I enter a password here I click save look at that password and confirm password should match if I enter an invalid email I click that so the error messages changes as expected okay cool but then if you look at the slide we have a header text as well page errors or validation errors whatever we want um, so how do you set the uh, header text again this validation summary control has got a header text property all you need to do is to set that property so I'm gonna set the header text here and that's going to be validation errors so header text let's set that to validation errors okay and if you look at that now we get that header text so obviously if we run this you should expect a header text there and if you look at the display uh, you know at the minute if you look at these these validation errors are shown using a bullet list but then on the slide we don't have a bullet list so how do we customize that now that's again very simple you have another property so if you go to the properties of the validation summary control there's a display mode property uh, at the moment it's bullet list but you can change it to a list which will display the error messages like that and if you set it to single paragraph you know the error messages will be displayed like that okay let's select list just to match up with what we have on the presentation slide so that's about display mode property and display mode can be list bullet list single paragraph etc and at the moment we are looking at the summary of the validation control validation summary control which is displayed on the page on the other hand it's also possible to get a message box and all you have to do for that is if you flip to Visual Studio there is a property called show message box which is false by default but you can set that to true 
and the moment I set that to true and when I run the project along with the summary control we will also get a message box okay so when I click this you know look at that I get these uh, validation summary as well as the message box but in real time it's 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 unusual to use message box because it will be a little annoying to the users it's it's a common practice to use validation summary controls but you have the flexibility of choosing how do you want to display error messages to your users do you want to use a summary box or a message box or both of them so that's about validation summary control on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.